you can see it or not, but there's San Juan off in the distance, 10, 11 miles up. Beautiful morning. We're just coming back from uh, St. Croix. Got a partial load on the barge. Some high in the water. And I thought today would be a good day to talk about loss of propulsion. A lot of uh, times, uh, you know, a lot of things in life, if you your engine stops, you just stop. But when you're towing a barge, that could be death. <laughs> That's because the barge sometimes can run you over. So there's a couple things we think about when we uh, talk about lack of propulsion. I figured today would be a good day to talk about it. Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. And hey, guess what? We're down in the Caribbean. That's right, no longer in New York. Well, just a little change of contract here and a little change of scenery. So if you want to see something different, maybe a side of the Caribbean you've never seen before, come on over every Tuesday and uh, see us, see what we do down here. It's a different type of the towing industry. It's actually towing on the wire. A lot of deep water towing, uh, crazy ports, all kinds of fun stuff. Come along and strap in and hope you enjoy the ride. So, what do we got going on here? Right now, we are killing time because the pilots don't want us to come to enter San Juan until 10.30 this morning. So, um, we're going very slow and uh, we've got a following sea and that poses some other problems as well. Now the good news is, we're in about 1,600 feet of water, so uh, there's no chance of the wire dragging on the bottom right now. And uh, I talk about that because that's going to be a problem if if you are, uh, you know, if we're doing, if you're, if you're running along and all of a sudden you have a lack of propulsion, uh, the engine, you know, the motors die. So, what do you do? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, assuming that the engines die, one of the first things that we're doing, you know, alarms will be going off and all kinds of things. We're, everything's double redundant, sometimes triple and quadruple redundant on a tugboat, but uh, <laughs> in the unlikely event, something happens and we lose both engines. Uh, we also have a generator running that runs our steering so we're hoping that doesn't die as well but the first thing I'm gonna do if I'm towing a loaded barge on a wire is to try to get the barge away so that when the barge I mean get the tug away from the barge so that we won't get run over by the momentum of the barge and even if the engines are are not working you should have enough way on that you'll be able to turn and get a little bit out of the way as these things come together but it's not just that easy because there's there's other things too that you have to consider and that's that if you have the barge here and the tugboat here and a big heavy wire between the two even if it were flat calm which you, uh, you know the camera never shows it but we got a really good heave on right here um, nice and slow and we're going with it so it doesn't it's a comfortable ride but even so, imagine if this were flat calm. When you have the, the barge and the tug and the wire between the two, if you just sat there, the weight of the wire is gonna pull the two of them together eventually. And that's probably not gonna be a good thing. So, that's one thing that we have to worry about. Another thing we have to worry about is getting tripped. And, um, those that aren't familiar with tripping, tripping is when the wire goes alongside the barge, uh, alongside the tug, and the barge goes by you, and then when the wire comes tight, it'll actually roll the tug over. Um, I have a whole video on tripping. If you look down in the videos, you'll find it will say tripping and that sort of stuff. <laughs> not, the, 
not the tripping <laughs> some of you might have done back in the 60s. <laughs> Different kind of tripping, but probably as dangerous, if not more. <laughs> but uh, so we want to go by. So let's assume that we have a a loaded barge and we're making way and we're hooked up we're doing it six eight knots something like that and we have a catastrophic loss of engines um it's very unlikely that i, I shouldn't say very unlikely there are very good odds that even if you don't get to steer the tug at all the two will fall out of out of alignment and that's that as soon as the the barge stops having the momentum pulled on it it kind of wants to go its own way and though the wind and the seas are going to act differently on the tug than they will on the on the barge so hopefully the barge will go by you without running you over and uh, when I say running you over if it's a loaded barge and it's right down to the water it could simply just push the stern and that wouldn't be the end of the world. However, it's very rare that that happens. For instance, when you see our barges, I don't know if you can see it all the way back there. I had had an idea that I was going to make this video back on the stern, but we've got the uh, we've got the blowers going. It's really, really noisy back there. But anyway, you worry about the rake of the bow. The rake is the angle, and you worry about that the. the the bow, the bow of the barge will actually come up over the top of the tugboat. And as odd as that sounds, this has happened before with other tugs where their doghouse, the part that we run the winch on back there, has actually been wiped out on some barges, uh, some tugboats as the barge comes by and the rake is hanging over and it actually makes contact with that. But uh, there's a couple things that we do I, I say we do, um, I've been doing this for a while and I've never had a complete engine failure, you know, a loss of propulsion, but it's something that we train for all the time because it could be catastrophic if it happens. So the idea is that we, we hopefully first are going to be out to the side of it. Then we have the other problem and that's that if the barge goes by us and we're at the wrong angle, say we're perpendicular to the barge. When the wire comes tight, if the, you know, the, assuming that, you know, the, you might have 12,000 tons of cargo with the weight of the barge and the cargo on board, as opposed to only a couple hundred tons of the tugboat, the tugboat's going to stop, but the momentum of the barge is going to keep going and it will go by you. And when that wire comes tight, because it's pulling, because, you know, if you were perpendicular to the barge, it can pull on the side of the of the tugboat and roll the tug over and that, that that's something that we really don't want to happen now there's a couple good there's a couple things that we do to mitigate that one of them is i mean we we think about this we don't do it because uh it's not something that happens all the time but this is something that we train for and that's that if that were to happen as the barge went by we would be letting wire out eventually the barge is going to slow down and eventually the speed of the tugboat is going to increase uh, assuming that the tugboat turns and now is heads and tails with the barge so the tug will be pulled backwards but remember that a loaded barge might go for a very very long distance just in the inertia of it alone so the idea would be to get out of the way number one number two let the barge come by and number three pay out the wire a lot of people ask me, oh, do you cut the wire? Do you do this? Um, hopefully, no. Remember, though, the, one of the qualities of the wire is that it's very, very heavy. And so as the barge goes by, even if you were perpendicular to the barge and you're in the danger zone, you can pay that out. You say, well, what happens if you had a catastrophic fuel problem and you lost everything, the generators, the... The, the, the propulsion and all that, doesn't matter. We can still freewheel the winch all the time. So you'd freewheel it out and um, you know, you, you'd be letting that wire go to try to save you. Now, as you're doing that, the weight of the wire and the momentum is gonna start pulling on the back of the tug. And so hopefully, the per being perpendicular to the barge, as the barge goes by, the tug will rotate backwards and you know, will start being towed backwards. And at that point, then they're then you know, 
I don't mean you're all set, but I mean, if we got towed backwards by a barge that's on its way, the barge is gonna slow down very quickly, well, relatively speaking, and um, things will be better at that point. That's the, and, and then, then, you know, depending on where you are, if you had sea room, you would work on the problem. If you didn't have sea room and you were in, you know, littoral waters, you would be, if it was some place that you could anchor, you could drop the anchor on the um, barge once it's slowed down and um, work on the problem from there. But losing propulsion is a big deal. Uh, that would be a call for a, a general alarm. Um, we would ring the general alarm anyway to wake everybody up, but everyone was probably gonna be up anyway, because as soon as you, on a, on a tug like this, there's so many alarm systems, alarms are gonna be going off through the boat anyway, from uh, the engine failure alarms to, to generator failure alarms to all the different things that are gonna happen. And this happens from, you know, when the engines just shut down when they're not supposed to, there's gonna be a reason for that. And let's say it's a fuel issue, there's gonna be fuel alarms that are gonna be going off. So there's gonna be a ton of alarms going off. And that, it's kind of weird, but in a, a scenario like this, one of the most difficult things is actually trying to keep your head and wits about you while all these alarms are going off. But uh, that's that. Okay, so the barge goes by, or you get out of the way, the barge goes by, you hopefully get stern to the barge pay out the wire and as you're paying it out and you're stopping it more and more weight is going and that weight is acting as a shock absorber to slowly speed you up going backwards as well so that's how that works but now let's talk about a situation we have going on right now today uh, we have a little problem and uh it's something that's not the end of the world but it's something that we can talk about and that's that we are, as I was saying before, you might hear that noise. There's a noise underneath us. That's our water maker. We're out in nice water out here, so we're making water. Um, one of the things that we have a problem with when you go slow is the wire on the rail. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Normally we tow with about five and a half lays out so that the barge is very far behind us. Right now we have about two and a half lays out and as you can see, the wire is touching the rail. And that's really bad. It's not really bad, we don't care about the rail. The rail is what we call a sacrificial piece. In other words, they can put a bead on there, they can do whatever they want. It's the wire that we really have to protect. Now the wire is much, stronger, it's, it's a much uh, tougher, you know, the wire's a stronger steel than the, uh, than, than the rail is, and that's why the rail is sacrificial. Having said that, that's not something that we, we like. We don't like that at all. So the obvious solution to this would be to heave in more wire. The problem is, well, like I say, I don't know if the camera's going to show it, but there's a considerable amount of, uh, oops, a little bit of water on the deck. A considerable uh, heave on down here, meaning the, there's a swell. So if we did that, the weight we need the weight of the wire to act as a shock absorber, so it doesn't put un, you know shock loads on the whole system. And it's not just the wire, but it's it's also the winch, the level line, the fish plate, the bridle, the socket. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we don't want to shock load. So what do we do? Well, in this case, we only have just a little bit longer here to go. So, in our time and kill, in killing time here, um, you know, there I've worked on boats that don't have a Texas bar, and they've put uh, there's a great big piece of chafing gear, which is like a big plastic. Imagine a, a plastic ABS straw that's big enough to go around the the wire, but it's cut in half. It's about three foot long, probably two and a half inches of ABS uh, plastic and you bolt that onto the wire and then you tie it off to the cleat so it would be clamped onto the wire back here and there'd be a line going back to the cleat to keep it from moving back and forth you know if, uh, you know if you paid any wire out you don't want to lose the thing overboard 
and uh, that would be nice. But we're not gonna do that today because we've only got just a little while to go. But because we want to protect the wire and we want to protect the boat too, meaning this is this is not an ideal solution at all. But what we're concerned about today is the health of our wire. So when we do do this and we do have contact on the rail, we do number one we try to make sure that we <laughs> mitigate that as much as possible. Have a situation where we don't need that. Um, uh, and then, then the other thing that we could do is we could speed up and then just do faster circles waiting for the pilot. Or we could uh, do what I'm going to do right now, which is every so often I'll go up to the doghouse. The doghouse is up here where we have the stern controls for the boat and the winch controls. And I'll pay out a little wire, wire every, so once in a, every, every once in a while so that as the wire moves back and forth on the rail, it's not one part of the wire that takes all the heat, you know, we, we need to move that along. So that's how we deal with that. But uh, anyway, that barge right there, it looks light. For reasons I don't understand, we only had an order for 15,000 barrels. So they put 15,000 barrels and into San Juan we go with it. But that's that. That interesting, but uh, I guess uh, if there's any takeaway from any of this, it's that sometimes it's important to train for things that are very unlikely just because if they do happen, you don't want to have to stop and think about it. Then you want to make sure that, that you have a plan in place, you know what you're going to do and uh, everything's gonna be fine. And in this case, like I say, I've never been on, I've been on boats that have lost an engine. I've been on boats where we've had to, uh, you know, run on one engine. I've been on boats where both engines have gotten overheat alarms and we slow down and that sort of stuff. But uh, a complete uh, lack of propulsion is something that I've been blessed with that that's never happened to. Nevertheless, we still train for that all the time and I thought you guys would like it too. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, make sure that you uh, subscribe, post a comment, give me a thumbs up, that sort of stuff. And uh, don't forget to check out my other channel, SV Paquita. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you to the patrons. If you want to support the, if you want to support the production of these videos, you can. There's a hard icon, thank you button that you can click down below for a one-time donation, or you can go to uh, uh, Patreon. On. and uh, I'll put a link in the comments there too if that's if that's your thing but anyway just appreciate you guys watching and uh, you guys stay safe and as always see you on the one